DJ Sensex, one extra is Friday night, you know what we do. Now, this guy that's with me right now in the studio recently just tore down the garage in London. It's his debut show in the UK. It's absolute zoo tonight. This guy is the hottest artist to look out for right now. And 2017 is going to be his. 2016 is his already. Lil Yachty, what's going on? What's going on? Was, was that intro appropriate? No, that was, t- that was like boxing intro. <laughs> Like a champion. <laughs> How's it feel to be in the UK? It feels good. Uh, uh, it feels good to be out of America. Not saying anything's wrong with America, just to experience something new. I mean, you got a lot of fans out here. You got a lot of love out here. It's like I didn't even know. When we announced that you were going to be doing the show, response was crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, in- it's insane. Sold out straight away. Like, like how fast? Just, just like within a day, it was just like it was, it was like people couldn't believe that it was happening. So <laughs> that's tight. You gonna come back again? Ah, uh, yeah, I hope so. Should have did two shows. So, what made you pick up the mic? How did you get into this whole like music thing? Um, just being around my friends, really. Like it was like a, I don't know, just like influence. But it started like a joke, you know, like for the longest, it was a joke. It's still a joke sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. It's just fun. Right. Like a hobby. It's something to do. Who's the first rapper you heard? Ever? Yeah. Or who the first rapper that you was like into, like first meant something? I can remember is probably uh, Andre the Dollar. Okay. That's my dad used to play a lot. Like, as a young child, that's probably one of the first artists I can remember. Andre 3000, Big Boy, Outkast. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, now, you had a couple of mixtapes out. Like, the Little Boat mixtape. It's like, obviously, it's like, it's made a lot of noise. Yeah. What's What's the plan? What's next? What's happening? Working on an album. Right. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay. All right. When when are you thinking about dropping that? I don't know. I, 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 I wish as soon as possible. Right. I had to start on it first. Right. Okay. And I just really, really, really want it to be, good, like, excellent. Right. So, okay. you know, you can't rush that. So, like, as much as I wish... I could give a date or an uh, idea. I don't know. Another joint I've been banging out on my show. Mm-hmm. The Summertime. Summertime? Yeah. That song wasn't even supposed to come out. Wait. Wait, Summertime was like... John, Tom, Yeah. Yeah, that song wasn't supposed to come out. <laughs> we never finished it. Oh, but serious? The producer, uh, the producer was begging me. Like, all right, go ahead. It's not even finished. It's supposed to be on Summer Songs, too. Someone hit me off, man. They didn't pick it. That old guy over there didn't. <laughs> it's a good song, though. It's a banger. It's tight, right? Yeah, it's a banger, man. Yeah, it's banger. tight. That song is tight. Sorry. <laughs> I never finished it. We had a lot of bangers. Yeah, we did. It was yeah. too many. That's a good song, though. It sounds like Summer, right? I, I, think, I think that's a smash. Yeah. I think that's like, that's, that's, like, that's, like, that's the kind of joint that will pop off in a beefer. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what that is. A beef is like, it's equivalent to Cancun. I still don't know what that is. Okay. A beef is like, you know where there's one spot where everybody goes for the summer? Okay. And like, just party, and like, biggest DJs, biggest clubs, and everything else. Okay. You, you're going to learn about a beef. Like, okay. you'll know about that. You'll be getting mad bookings over there. Sweet. But that's in Europe, it's the island, it's banging. Oh, tight. Okay. Yeah. But that, that you're going to have a lot of fun out We got to do something with that record, right? Like a yeah. crazy video. I, yeah. That song is tight. It's anger. Banger. I might finish it and do something with it. I don't know. All right, well, let me get the official copy like earlier. For sure. <laughs> I got you since you believe in it. So another joint that I've been banging out right here on One Extra mm-hmm. is um yeah, it's a crazy collaboration. I never saw it coming. Yourself, chance to rap a young thug mixtape. Oh yeah, that's not your tight. It's insane. Yeah. How did that come about? I was so surprised. Chance, I guess he reached out. Uh, um, I was surprised, but I knew I, I knew I had to kill it. Cause it's Chance the Rapper. 
I was a big fan way before like I started making music. Mm, so like of him, so I don't know. I just really I felt like I, I wanted to impress him, kind of. So I did that verse like that. A lot of people will always say it's one of my best verses. It's okay. All right. Go give a big shout out to Drem. Man, that's the homie. He was in the UK recently. Yeah. So, you know, because you've never been in the UK before, never hooked up before. I was saying to Drem, I was like, well, what's Yachty like? Like, what's, what's your name? He's like, Yachty is one of the most grounded people yeah. you will ever meet. He's one of the nicest guys, one of the hardest workers. That's how he is. He was like, I got, the, I got, I got the most time for like Yachty. That's my boy. How did the Buckley joint come about? So crazy. I believe that's when we had a meeting in LA, and and we went to um, um, what's his name? Went to um his studio, um, um Rick Rubin. Went to Rick Rubin's studio and um, to meet with him. And John was just there. Like, it just happened to be there recording. Yeah, he said Vic Rubin said that you two should connect. Yeah, right? he yeah, just, that's just crazy it was kind of like a weird, like, magical music god power. He just said, you two, y'all should do a song. Then we did the song, and number one. <laughs> I need to talk to Rick about that. Like, because <laughs> I remember he, he said, he was just like, man, you two, y'all should do something. Then later that night, I met with him at the studio, and Jay Graham and his homies made that beat. I did that verse. Oh, shout out like, to Jay Graham. Yeah, yeah super yeah, shout out to like Jay yeah. Graham. Yeah. I did that verse in like five, six minutes. Freestyled it. I didn't even write it. I just went in there. How'd you hook up with Vic Rubin? Uh, through email. Yeah, he, he hit us up. Hold on. Email, right? Like, one of the greatest producers of all time. Like, yeah. you could argue one of the founders, one of the cornerstones yeah. of hip-hop. Like, just by email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what happened? What was on the email? Like, come on, you got, you got, a, what happened in the email? Oh, he said he wanted to meet. He flew us to L.A. Flew me to L.A. He's tight. I got to meet with him again. I wasn't even cl- close to on, I don't think, when I met with him. It's really nice. I think I'm in a way <coughs> different position in life now than I was then. He's really cool, though. Okay. That's uh, it's an insane hookup. It's an insane story as well. It's like, yeah. That's like, that's deep. Wow. Yeah. Another joint which I've been banging out right here on Extra. Mm-hmm. The collabo with Post Malone. Monty. Oh, yeah. That's cool. I didn't like that verse that I did. Everybody like that. People like that though. It's banger. I like the song, but I didn't. I felt like I could have did better. He liked it. That was good. I didn't think he was gonna like it. When I met him, he he liked it. And people are like in the world like it. I thought it was cool. For you, what's your best track? What you know? Cause you you seem very like judgmental about your own music and your own verses and everything but what, what, what would you say is your best moment or like what do you think that young glad I did that um yeah, probably I would say the whole little boat collection as a as a one you know record wise I, I don't know yet I probably wouldn't say I have it yet that one record that's just like this is just you know I'm still working to get there, you know. But I feel like I one b- little boy as a collection. Like when I listen to it, the original one is 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 the. I mean, but I always want to improve. It's always room to improve. You know, so I always want to one up and just be better the next time. So it's always room for a new favorite. You look tired. Yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm just, you know, I'm floating around right now, trying to stay alive. What do you think of the Atlanta show? Of whom? Atlanta. That show is so tight. The TV show, Atlanta yeah, yeah, yeah. FX. Yeah, yeah. Donald Glover. Yeah, that show is so dope. Man. Is it realistic? Uh, yeah. Am I able to talk about it? Yeah. I was supposed to be on that show. Oh, serious? Yes. And but we had I was on tour. I was this was right when we were about to go on tour, young thug. And like I, I, I wanted to do it 
I was like, nah. You know, but I wasn't like super sad because it was just like I didn't really know much about it. But now that I see it and it's out and I see the impact and how dope it is, I'm like, man. Man, I wish I was on that show. And I just saw it, just got approved for a second show, second season. Yeah. And I sent out a special tweet to Donald Glover. <laughs> and right now it's got 20,000 favorites. Yeah. I, lo- I love the way they put like music in there as well that isn't obvious. You it's know? so dope. Yeah. It's so, so dope. Yeah, so and the tired. episode this week was Zan. Like, that's deep. It's so dope. So I'm trying to get in there. You know what I'm saying? You might see your boy next season. No hopes. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. We'll see. Every artist that I know that comes through the show, that knows you or has worked with you, they all big you up. They all say that you're really dope, you're grounded, like you're down to earth, you're good guys to work with and everything else. That's love. But why do you think like this whole backlash, like because of what you said about not knowing five biggie tracks, like it's, you're kind of demonized a lot. <laughs> I know, right? And it's I'm crazy. such a... I'm, so cool like I don't even know I guess people don't like my it's an opinion I guess people don't like my opinion you know and it's only an opinion and people always try to say I'm disrespectful but I don't see how I'm disrespectful to them I've never said anything bad about them and for that big t- like it's a big like headline going around saying I, that I said Drake is better than Tupac and Biggie it wasn't me like my <laughs> friend said it and I recorded them but th- I did not say one thing you know what I'm like, I never said Drake was better than Tupac okay. ever Okay. Ever, you know, so I, I never said that. I just like to clear this is a big radio station. I know it's gonna go on YouTube. I never said that, you know, <laughs> because people watch my interviews. I never said that. Okay, so back to the conversation. I don't know why people like to demonize me over mm. me not knowing five. Like, I, I'll just look at it like, bro, I was born in '97. I think they were dead by the time I was born. By the time I was born. They were both dead. Mm. I didn't even really grow up listening to hip hop like that. My dad used to play the Beatles, Paul McCartney, Kane. He used to play Coldplay. My dad played Bilal, India, Ari. My dad played all other types of music <clears throat> in the world. My mom used to listen to Alicia Keys and like lady music. So, like, I didn't even grow up in hardcore hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Until I got like a little bit older. My dad played, he played Outkast, played TI, he played Atlanta music. He didn't really play West Coast. And the internet wasn't around then. Mm. So it's not like I was just bumping Tupac and Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So when I got to a certain age, when I started making music, I, I was in my own lane. Like, I was listening to what I like to listen to. So it's not like I'm a, you know. And who, what teenager? I didn't do homework in school. So what make you think out of school? I'm going to go and do some mm. homework on s- these artists that's like died before I was born. Like, that's just like a, a, a kid... Now, a young kid who watches basketball, he if he says LeBron is better than Michael Jack- Jordan, not Jackson, Jordan, <laughs> Michael Jordan, he wasn't around to see Michael Jordan play. Mm. How does he know? Like how? Do, like he? That's only his opinion. Like how do you? Like honestly, how does he even know if how good Michael Jordan was? Like mm. or if he if he he was around to see LeBron, so he's gonna say LeBron is better than Kobe or better than Michael because that's what he grew up on. That's mm. his hero. Like that's what we like. Like, but you, how do you patronize him and like try to beat him down? Mm. Like, I don't get that. Or, or like, or they they like to say, well, since you're a hip hop artist, which I never claim to be, since you're a hip hop artist, you you need to know this. You need to know your legacy. You need to know your history. Do your homework, and this this is rude and disrespectful. <laughs> and who let him in the hip hop game? I don't. I just like wait, bro. Like, come on, bro. And then there's blogs out here right now. I'm just going through because every time I get on radio, I like to speak it out. Right now they saying, right now they saying, it. Lil Boat just said at the BET Awards what they said. Just said they said Lil Yachty just said um they just said um all your favorite '80s and '90s rappers are uh washed up. I didn't say that. I said, what I said was, I said, everyone hating on the new wave or not accepting the new the new style that, because rap is changing, <clears throat> hip-hop is changing. Whether changes you, everything. Whether you like it or mm-hmm. not, it is changing and progressing. Mm-hmm. Like, I said they washed up only because you, you, you're you not accepting what's happening. Like, if mm-hmm. you're not learning to accept or you don't even have to like it. But if you un- like, you just under you gotta understand it, and it's not like it's gonna reverse. It's not gonna turn around and backstep. You know what I'm saying? It's only gonna go forward, like life, like the clock on my on your on your wall, like the watch on my wrist. It's only gonna keep going forward. Mm. It's not gonna turn around. So I mean, unless you catch that and understand that, 
you washed up. Like, I, and I said that. You like you, you, you getting left behind. Mm. You know what I'm saying you just missed the train. I think, I think what it is like. You got a situation now where like hip hop's like forty years old kind of thing. So right. you've got different generations, mm-hmm. and you always have a situation where the old guys aren't gonna like the new guys for whatever. So right. like you say one statement, like couldn't name five Biggie tracks. I don't. My my personal take on it is like that's if you don't, you don't, and that's it. You know. But I think the people who are condemning you were probably a lot more ignorant back in their day. Right. You know, if they was talking about other music or whatever, I just think, I don't know, man. This thing about the hip hop rule book, I was talking about this on Twitter earlier this week. Yeah, it's it's, it's funny. It's like it's it's dope though. Everyone's getting wild up. Like, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, at the end of the day, I still sleep excellent. <laughs> I, I I still sleep excellent, immaculate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I still wake up on time. And the day continues to go. So regardless of what they say, I just like to speak on it just because it gets, they like to speak on it. They like to speak mm-hmm. on it, I'm going to speak on it. But I really mm-hmm. don't care, honestly. I just be entertaining. I honestly could care less. Because my fans don't care. Yeah. My yeah, fans nah, nah, don't, nah, my fans I, don't, I don't care at all. I don't even think they're aware of the debate. Last whatever. time I checked, my show still sell out. As you've seen. <laughs> oh. So why are you in sure. the UK? Is there anything else that you want to check out? Anything else that you want to do specifically? Shop. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Like anything else? Like is there anything? I'm gonna take a picture with um one of the guys who wear red and they don't move. Oh, the Royal Guard. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I need to take a picture by a red telephone. Oof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're getting harder to find, like. Yeah. But yeah. There's some around central London. I'm a that's close. I'm gonna find one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I shop and take a picture with the man, and then the the, the telephone booth. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, record. Go to the studio. Yeah. That's about it. All right. Well, appreciate you passing through, man. No doubt. Appreciate Thank you coming to the UK. Thank you for having Finally. me. Finally. Yeah, I'm in here. Come back. Of course. Often. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm in here. I'm in here. Hehehe <laughs>